Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. September 28th, Charles Hodge. As a boy, Charles dutifully memorized scripture and the Westminster Catechism. Then the revival of 1815 led Hodge into an intense season of spiritual searching, and he found that God had made his boyhood beliefs both sincere and heartfelt. He entered Princeton Theological Seminary, where they required him to memorize the catechism again, in Latin. And on this date, in 1819, he graduated. Within the year, Charles was teaching at the seminary. And he kept on teaching, representing the faith, for 56 years. He trained up more than 3,000 seminary students, more graduate students than any other professor of any kind in the 19th century. Although Charles's teaching and the books he wrote caused him to be popularly known as the Pope of Presbyterianism, he trusted Christ alone. Point people to Jesus. You can't give what you don't have. Get to know God's empowering grace, then share it. Charles Hodge stared at the blank stationery on his desk and thought of Sarah. He wondered why their letters had become superficial, that is, when there were any letters at all. When he had first noticed her back home in Philadelphia years earlier, he had only been 15, and now that they were old enough to court, she had agreed to correspond with him while he studied at Princeton Seminary. Charles spent most of his days daydreaming about her large blue eyes. What had happened between Sarah and him? Something just didn't feel right. Most likely he was to blame, Charles thought. Sarah had trusted him with her private struggles concerning God and her faith. His response had not quite satisfied her questions. Was it his inability to help her through those painful emotions that had created this distance? The day before, his professor had encouraged the class to, quote, look unto Jesus. Until a person looked to Jesus, he was left struggling in his own strength. When he looked to Jesus, the battle would become God's. Charles prayed for wisdom. He couldn't give Sarah what he didn't have, but as he experienced the grace of God, he could now share that grace with her. Sarah tried so hard to be good, and she struggled with this. Charles was learning that to be good on his own without knowing Jesus was like trying to start a fire with no wood the direct reverse of what God had prescribed. He put the fountain pen upon the paper and Charles wrote, My dear Sarah, the reason why persons truly pious make so little progress is because they do not carry on the conflict in the right way. Trying to change inner motivation never worked. You couldn't force holiness. Jesus promised to deliver from faults and he never failed. Charles wrote, Use Christ as though he were your own. Employ his strength, his merit, and his grace in all your trials. This is the way to honor him. Fear not that he will be offended at the liberty. That day, Charles prayerfully reread the letter and wrote the year, 1818, across the bottom. As Charles continued his studies at Princeton, his thoughts were not far from Sarah. He thought, how would she receive my letter? When Sarah wrote back, the tone encouraged him. Soon they corresponded with more intimacy. What joy to share the love of Christ with his wife-to-be, he thought. In the Bible, Paul wrote that a husband should love his wife as if she were a part of himself. Charles would love Sarah as God loved him sharing with her God's patient grace. Together, grounded in Christ, they would build a strong and godly relationship. Ephesians 5.28 says, In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. As Charles finished seminary, preached, and then received an appointment to teach at Princeton, he continued to share with Sarah what he was learning, to look to God, 
not oneself. Charles wrote, don't wait until your heart becomes penitent and humble. Go with a proud heart for him to change. He alone can give you what you need. For roughly two years, the correspondence between Charles and Sarah continued. One day, Charles eagerly opened another letter from Sarah. Written on August 4th, 1820, the letter read, I love to feel myself bound to you by ties that not even the grave can change. Sarah wrote that she felt cherished, guided by his words, and grateful that he was the instrument God had used to draw her closer to himself. As Charles read the letter, his eyes were filled with tears. God gave him grace, and God gave grace to Sarah through him. How do you love others as you love yourself? Point people to Jesus. You can't give what you don't have. Get to know God's empowering grace, then share it. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.